Good afternoon, everyone. I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. The time is 6.02 p.m. On March 16, 2020, Governor Abbott temporarily suspended certain portions of the Texas Open Meetings Act to allow meetings of governmental bodies to be held telephonically and by, and by video conference in the interest of public safety. Tonight's meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees is being held through the use of Zoom, a software application that allows for two-way communication. The, me the members of the board, the, the members of the Board of Trustees are not gathered in a central physical location, but a quorum of members is in attendance through video conference and or by telephone. Patrons also in attendance through the Zoom software applications. Patrons are also in, a, in attendance through the Zoom software application. For those that are unable to virtually attend this meeting, the audio recording of the meeting will be posted on the district's website. To the extent uh, practicable, the board will adhere to its standard meeting pro procedures. However, in keeping with state and local rules relating to the size of public, public gatherings, comments from the public that have been submitted electronically will be read aloud during public comments portion of the meeting. Um, the first item on the board agenda is our invocation and pledge by trustee Mr. Ray Sanders. Mr. Sanders, if you will, please. Thank you, President Williams. For those that would like to, would you please join me in prayer? Dear God, please help us to find hope despite our circumstances and how we feel. Our situations are not hidden from your eyes. You are all knowing and all loving. We ask that you give us the assurances we need to get us through this moment, through this hour and through this day. We declare today that hope is in us as Board of Trustees, and I pray for all those that hear my voice that they would have hope because you are working in us and for our good and for your glory. For it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Would you please also join me as we pledge allegiance to the United States flag of America? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. <clears throat> and now to the state of Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. We pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Uh, with that, that's item 1A and B, the invocation and pledge, uh, pledge of allegiance by uh, trustee Mr. Ray Sanders. I'll turn it over to Dr. No for the citizens of participation portion of the agenda. Dr. No. Thank you, President Williams. The format for public comment at tonight's board meeting has been adjusted as allowed by Governor Abbott's order temporarily suspending portions of the Texas government code. As explained in the official notice for this meeting and on the district's website, anyone who wanted to address the board of trustees during the public comment portion of the meeting was invited to submit their comments through the public comment form on the district's website. No pub, excuse me, Mrs. Gladys will read each of the submitted comments aloud as written. The comments will be a part of the recording of this board meeting and will be published to the district's website as a part of the recording of the meeting. As always, please note that the board may only respond by providing specific factual information and the recitation of policy. The board is not permitted to deliberate on any item that is not on its agenda. Additionally, public comment is not the appropriate forum for bringing complaints for which a resolution is sought. Finally, in compliance with the state and federal confidentiality laws, should any of the submitted comments contain information that could personally identify a student, unless the student is the person who submitted the comment or the parent or guardian of the named student, Mrs. Galatis will not read any part of the comment that would identify that student. Mrs. Galatis, if you would please read the first public comment. Thank you, Dr. Null. Members of the board, there was one comment. It was submitted by Wendy Maurer, a parent. And I will read the comments as is written. Dear Conroe ISD, during these trying times of COVID-19, we have learned a lot of new information about that. We as a district, community, and families have never considered. It has pushed us to all think in ways have never done before. One of the things that must be considered as per TEA within the scope of distance learning services is the continuum of services. Now I know as a working parent in the field of pediatric therapy 
and as a previous special education teacher for over 10 years, I completely emphasize with the school district with what they are facing. But as a parent of a child with disabilities, I stand by TEA standards set forth by the state and my child's free and appropriate public education, FAPE, as a federal mandate. COVID-19 isn't a trial period of what we need to do next. It is illegally protected that my child is insured the same services. The attached resource letter from TEA states, if schools are closed, but the LEA continues to provide educational opportunities to the general student population during the closure, the school must ensure that students with disabilities also have equal access to the same opportunities, including the provision of FAPE. The LEA must ensure that, to the greatest extent possible, each student with a disability can be provided the special education and related services identified in the student's IEP. My child requires services listed in his IEP that have not been addressed by CISD. Our child needs you now more than ever. Please don't leave him behind. Set new standards for IEP supplements to include IEP distance learning plan. As always, happy to meet and plan any areas of needs to address in this area. Thank you, Wendy Maurer, parent of mother, of proud mother of Suchma Eagle, Carter Maurer, first grade. She lists two attachments uh, that are websites and they are tea.texas.gov backslash sites backslash default backslash file backslash COVID-19 underscore special underscore ED underscore QA underscore updated underscore April underscore 16 dot PDF. And the final website she lists is tea.texas.gov backslash sites backslash default backslash files backslash FAPE underscore reminder underscore T dot PDF. That concludes her comments. Okay, Dr. Noel, we're at, um, is that, does that conclude citizen participation, Dr. Noel, Ms. Gladys? Yes, sir, it does, thank you. Okay, with that being said, consent, we're on item two of the agenda, the consent agenda. I have received no request from trustees to remove anything. Trustees, do you have anything that you want to see removed? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Mr. President, I approve as presented. I second. We have a motion and a second. Gentlemen, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any, anyone opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. With that being said, um, I would like to, if it's all the same, for the trustees to move the HR item, item number eight, up to um, the item number three now. Is that is that is if that's acceptable? Any objection, trustees? No. Okay, here and now we'll do that. Human resources, item eight A, name principal of Irons Junior High School, Dr. No. Thank you very much, President Williams. Uh, this is an exciting night as we will be uh, naming some educators into new positions. Um, we have much to celebrate in Conroe ISD, as you know, the success of our campuses. Uh, and tonight we will continue that. I'm, I'm very excited tonight that uh, all the candidates that we're bringing forward are current Conroe ISD employees. It, it shows the investment that we are making in our current employees and we're excited about that. Uh, we start tonight with Irons Junior High. As you all know very clearly, um, Irons Junior High has been one of our highest performing schools uh, in Conroe ISD for many years. Um, as we've seen on our trips and we go uh, into that building, we know that it's such a well-run school. The students perform so well academically and, and uh, they've been led by Jeff Fuller for many years, um, but certainly he has not done his work alone. And um, we're excited tonight to make a recommendation to continue the great things that are going on at Irons by uh, promoting one of the assistant principal at Irons into the principal position, uh, Mr. Robert McFarland. So I would like to make that recommendation at this time. So moved. Hey, gentlemen, we have a motion. A second. I second the motion. Uh, uh, the second. I got a motion. Why the motion was made by uh, Trustee Moore. Who was the second? Was that Skeeter? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Huber made the second. Gentlemen, we have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You know what? I, I skipped over discussion. I assume we didn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> all right, motion second. All in favor was aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen, and uh, congratulations. Congratulations, Mr. McFarland. And 
I believe that Mr. McFarland is now joining us, and uh, we would invite you at this time to um, share some comments with your beautiful family there in tow. Yes, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll, I'm excited and honored that you have chosen me for the opportunity to serve as principal of Irons Junior High School. First, I would like to thank Mr. Jeff Fuller for his guidance and mentorship in my career. I look forward to building upon the successful foundation laid by Mr. Fuller over the past eight years. Would also like to thank my family for all their support in my leadership journey. I look forward to serving the students, staff, and fam uh, families of Irons Junior High for years to come. Congratulations, Mr. McFarland. We are excited and I know that um, I speak for everybody at Irons and throughout the Oak Ridge Feeder. They are excited for you tonight. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Would you like to introduce those two beautiful people standing behind you there? This is my son, Ethan, and my uh, daughter, Emma. And my wife, unfortunately, is um, being that frontline worker tonight and handling uh, veterinary medicine at the emergency clinic. So she couldn't be with us tonight. Well, congratulations to your family, sir. All righty. Thank you, Dr. Nall. Congratulations, Mr. McFarland. Um, all right. We're on item. That's always outstanding. Always great to do. So let's go with our, our item eight, main principal of McCullough Junior High, Dr. No. Thank you, sir. Uh, once again, this is a, a really exciting opportunity for us tonight. Um, big shoes to fill at McCullough Junior High, as we know, with uh, Mr. McCord uh, moving on. And, and we understand the impact uh, that McCullough has as one of the largest junior highs in the state and also one of the highest performing. And um, we felt it was important to find someone that was connected to the community uh, and is well known in the community. And for that reason, um, Jill Hauser is going to be our recommendation tonight. Ms. Hauser is currently the principal of the Woodlands High School ninth grade campus. So she is very uh, aware of those students from McCullough. As she's been receiving them as the principal of Woodlands nine for many years. Um, she's also a proud uh, Highlander herself, actually. Um, was a student at McCullough when it first opened. I think she may share that with us tonight as well. So uh, proud tonight to make the recommendation of Ms. Jill Hauser to be the principal of McCullough Junior High. Well, standing. So moved. Second. Motion, Mr. Husbands, and a second, Mr. Sanders. Gentlemen, any discussion? Three and none, all in yeah. favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Here and none, motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Ms. Hauser. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. It is a great honor to be named the principal at McCullough Junior High. I have the pleasure of following Chris McCord, who is one of the most gifted communicators and planners in our district. I'm privileged to have the opportunity to follow his example and continue the great work he has accomplished. My career as an educator began 27 years ago in Conroe ISD. During this time, I have been fortunate to work with many fabulous teachers and administrators. I would like to recognize three of these influential educators tonight. When I was a junior high math teacher, I strove to be the best math teacher possible by modeling the practices of Dolly Vogel. Dr. Don Stockton gave me my first opportunity in a leadership role when he chose me to be the math department chair at the Woodlands High School. But perhaps the most influential person administratively has been Greg Colshan, who encouraged and supported me as I moved into the roles of assistant principal and ninth grade campus principal at TWHS. I would not be the educator I am today without the love and support of my family who are watching virtually. I would like to recognize my parents, Gary and Joan Maddox, my late husband, Steve Malpass, my husband, Marion Hauser, and my three daughters, Mindy, Morgan, and Megan, who are all CISD graduates. I also have two wonderful grandsons, Logan, age six, and Ethan, age five, who refer to me as Grandma Jilla. I have been a Highlander since 1976 when McCullough first opened its doors. I was an eighth grader and a proud member of the third graduating class. It has been a blessing to be part of the Highlander family for such a long time. I'm looking forward to continue serving the Highlander community as principal at McCullough Junior High. Thank you and go Highlanders. Congratulations. Congratulations, Congratulations that was an outstanding job. Congratulations. I'll be sending a couple kids your way, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
back to that one over there and one coming. All right, let's go. Uh, item HC, name principal of Conroe High School, ninth grade campus. Dr. No. Thank you, sir. Um, as you know, uh, Conroe High School ninth grade campus has, has recently become open in the principal position because Mr. Brian Gorka has accepted the principal position at Stockton Junior High. Um, as we worked through um, finding a new principal for Conroe High School ninth grade campus, what was evident from the feedback that we received from the campus and also just what we know about Mr. Gorka is um, they wanted someone that was high energy um, that could come in and have that same energy level, same positiveness that Mr. Gorka had with students to help give students hope that, um, that they could be successful. Um, we feel very confident that we found that person uh, in James Buddy Bush. He is currently an assistant principal at the Woodlands High School ninth grade campus. And um, prior to coming to Conroe ISD, he's worked in other school districts uh, and had varied experiences um, with students from all socio economic backgrounds. And so we are confident that he can make that connection. And I can tell you that uh, Ms. Tasha Smith, principal of Conroe High School is very excited um, for this recommendation as well. So I'd like to rec recommend Buddy Bush uh, as the principal for Conroe High School ninth grade campus. So moved. I have a motion. I second. Motion, Mr. Moore, the second was from Mr. Hubert or was that Mr. Dale Emmon? Okay, oh, Mr. Emmon. Thank you, Mr. Emmon. Motion second. Gentlemen, any discussion? Here and on. All in favor, signify by aye. aye. Any abstention? I'm sorry, any opposition? Here and none, motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Mr. Bush. Outstanding job. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Dr. No. All right, Mr. Bush, welcome to the meeting. Looks like Sarah's moving him in here. There he is. Welcome, sir. Hi, guys. President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. No. As we stream this tonight, I hope that you and your families and all those viewing across the world are safe and healthy. Uh, it's difficult for me to find the words to express my appreciation for the opportunity to lead the Conroe High School ninth grade campus. Thank you for the leadership that you provide on a daily basis for empowering all of us to grow to better citizens. Conroe ISD is a phenomenal school district and a wonderful place to work. And I'm proud of the opportunity to serve the community of Conroe. Watching over my shoulder tonight, and wiggling around is my loving wife, Ashley, uh, my two sons, Jackson, and there's Drew here. Come here, Drew. Say hey, guys. <laughs> All right. Um, this next year, they'll both be Tigers as well as they'll both be attending Stewart Elementary. Uh, I could not do this without their support. Uh, I'd like to thank my mom, my sister, and my dad, a retired educator, for teaching me how to love. Also, I'd like to thank all my peer educators, especially those at TWHS 9 that have inspired me with their professionalism and care for students. To the Conroe Tiger Nation, I'm excited to meet you. I'm excited to get started and to witness the success we will achieve this fall and in the future. Mr. Gorka and his staff have created an excellent environment, and I hope to continue that excellence working hand in hand with Dr. Smith. Stay safe, stay healthy, our current situation today is only temporary, and we're going to get through this together. Uh, and it's because of that togetherness uh, we'll be successful tomorrow. We are Conroe. Sick of Tigers. Congratulations, Mr. Bush. And I'm, I'm sure there, I know there are a, a couple of uh, Conroe Tigers uh, on this forum here that, that um, may want to say congratulations as well. Go ahead, Mr. Hasman. <laughs> Absolutely. Congratulations, buddy. Looking forward to helping you in anything we can help you with. You have a lovely family. And from another tiger, congratulations. Good deal. And, and from a parent of a tiger and a spouse of a Kirbyville wildcat, go. <laughs> <laughs> That's good people there. Thank you. Congrats, Jim. All right, congratulations, Mr. Bush. All right, gentlemen, we're on item uh, – 8C, uh, I'm sorry, 8D, named Director of Elementary Education, Dr. No. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Um, once again, this is a position that became open as uh, Dr. Shelley Winkler uh, was promoted. And uh, this is a very important position as we have um, two leadership positions that oversee our 40 elementary schools. And Dr. Phillips does a wonderful job as our assistant superintendent. But this director position um, serves directly with Dr. Phillips. Um, to help oversee those schools and provide leadership and guidance to our principals. Um, 
as we looked for someone that could come in and, and fill this um, spot, we wanted to bring in great attributes. And we wanted to find someone that had many years experience as a principal, uh, had served uh, students from all different backgrounds and could be an asset to our principals, someone that they could trust, someone that they could have a personal relationship with and receive feedback, but also um, be kind of that that ear when they need it, when they need to vent, they need to talk. And uh, we know that we have found that right person in Miss Lisa Garrison. Uh, as you know, she has served us as uh, principal at Lamar Elementary and most recently at Powell. Um, She's handled some tough families over there, pal, uh, Mr. Williams. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I think she served very well uh, for you and you and your, you and your family. Uh, but she is well respected, well known, not only within just the Woodlands, but throughout Conroe ISD. And I'm proud tonight to make the recommendation for Lisa Garrison uh, to be our director of elementary education. I move. move. I got a second from Mr. Sanders, and I think I have a second from Mr. Hutt. That's correct. All right. She should get the promotion just based on her uh, accomplishments with my children. So <laughs> that, that's sort of what I was referring to, but I didn't want to be too direct. That's, yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Any comments, gents? Hearing no comments, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Hearing no opposition, motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, uh, Ms. Garrison, 100%. Great job. You want to bring Ms. Garrison in? All right. She's coming. I see her. It uh, looks like she's been added now, and maybe she can unmute and turn on her video, and we'll see her here. Welcome, Mrs. Garrison. Hello. There she is. Hi. Welcome. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, President Williams, members of, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll, I want to thank each of you for this incredible opportunity to serve as the director of elementary schools. When I get, began my career here 24 years ago, I knew immediately that Connor ISD was special. For me, our school district is about family. It's about being part of a vibrant community that comes together in good times and bad and always puts children first. I wanna thank my pal family, my husband, Chris, my daughter and son-in-law, Ashley and Brendan, who are watching from Midland, Texas, my son, Kale, who's in College Station right now um, at A&M taking a test, um, my brother Lane and my parents, Lynn and Sally Etheridge, for their love and support. Thank you for trusting me to serve our elementary schools. I look forward to the great things to come in Conroe. Congratulations, Mrs. Garrison. I, I don't want to tell on Kale, but I see that he's logged in right now watching. So I, I'm sure he's doing his test, but he's proud of his mama. I'm glad he's on here to watch right now. I can see his name over there. Thank you. I appreciate it. Congratulations, Garrison. Congratulations, Ms. Garrison. Uh, I look forward to it. Thank you. Congratulations. Final item on the HR item eight, uh, human resources agenda will be name of assistant, naming of assistant superintendent for teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. Dr. Thank you, sir. Um, once again, we, we're, we're proud to have so many great educators in Conroe ISD that make a difference. And I think now, maybe more than ever, we have seen the power of teachers um, and the work that they've done over these last few weeks as uh, students have not been in school. Uh, in Conroe ISD, our teachers are led by a great curriculum and instruction department. Um, they're, they're small, but they're mighty. Uh, we don't have a lot of folks in that department, but they, they truly are um, a team that gets work done at an unbelievable level. Um, and I, I, we've shared this before, but just even these, the plans that we've made over these last few weeks, um, we have school districts all over the nation using um, our distance learning materials because of the quality of work that is done in our CNI department. And um, it's a, it takes a great team, but it takes a great leader uh, in order to make that happen. And so uh, tonight we have an opportunity to uh, promote someone from director up to assistant superintendent. And in a school district of our size, uh, it is time to have an assistant superintendent for teaching and learning. And we are fortunate um, to have the best person to lead that team already on our team. And so I'm proud tonight to make the recommendation um, for our new assistant superintendent to be Dr. Edith Salceda Upshaw. I make so the motion. I'll second it. Who made the motion? I think it was Skeeter. Skeeter. <laughs> Mr. Huber um, first, Mr. Moore second. Gentlemen, any comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 A 
Outstanding. Hearing no opposition, motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Dr. Upshaw. Congratulations, Dr. Upshaw. Yes, and welcome. It looks like you're in the meeting now, Edith. Bring her on in. <laughs> Can you hear me? I apologize for the dinging of my... Um... <laughs> Everybody's congratulating you. That's yeah, good. My uh, iPhone's connected to my MacBook. <laughs> So we'll start get started. President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll, it is an honor and great privilege to be chosen for the position as our district's new assistant superintendent of teaching and learning. It has been a blessing for the past 22 years to study and learn alongside a remarkable group of educators and dedicated staff that work in our great school district. To the various leaders within the department of CNI, I thank you tonight for consistently designing a high quality curriculum and first class learning experiences for both teachers and students. Thank you for letting me lead, learn, and teach alongside you. It's through your hard work and dedication to our district's commitment to excellence that we will have a better world of education tomorrow. At the age of 19, Walter P. Jett gave a young bilingual girl an opportunity to teach students to value the gift of being multilingual. I had a heart full of passion to make things better for students with similar backgrounds as mine and to expand the current opportunities of others, but I needed to on exactly on how to get there. To my CISD family, family isn't defined only by last names or blood, it's defined by commitment and by love. To Dr. St Don Stockton and Kathy Sharples, two individuals in which I give credit for raising me as an educator. I have had many discussions with my parents throughout the years and they would agree. To Dr. Curtis Knoll and Dr. Chris Hines, I wasn't blessed with two siblings as brothers in my immediate family, but if I had the opportunity to fill those shoes, it would be the both of you. You allowed me to work in various capacities to learn how to become a better teacher and leader. Your encouragement and continuous assistance throughout this journey has made this lifetime opportunity tonight possible. You kept me focused and gave me unconditional support when I needed the most. Thank you for your continued contributions to the field of education. Your leadership and legacy is one to be admired, and I am forever grateful to the, each of you. To my extended CISD family, my mentors, Dr. Jean Stewart, Dr. Kathy Gibson, Dr. Debbie Phillips, Jim Caker, Greg Colshan, and Mrs. Gail Drummond, thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve in several capacities within our school districts and to, assess in the to assist in the education and the emotional well-being of our students and instructional leaders. I, Appreciate your patience, motivations, confidence throughout the year as well as your, as your guidance. So tonight I'd like to dedicate this honor to my family. So um, because of this distance learning, we would have been able to have our family there, but we can't. So with the help of Sarah Blake, this is my family in Rio Hondo, Texas. So it's my mom <laughs> and my dad and my sister Gris Lopez with her um, daughter Sara. So they're joining us via iPad. And I'm gonna ask Josh to hold that because they're my, they're my family. <laughs> To my parents, Olegario and Herminia Salceda, who gave me life and instilled in me high values and respect for dedication and hard work ethic for whatever you do in life. It is because of their sacrifices that I have give, been given this opportunity to the, uh, this dream. To my father, Ole, who led a household silently behind the scenes, worked tirelessly, multiple jobs to provide for his family and taught his two daughters to create a life of meaning. Thank you, dad, for making it a priority to ask me for my entire educational career about um, this journey and for encouraging me, encouraging me even when I think that I couldn't get the job done. To my mother, Mina, thank you for keeping me grounded through life and its experiences of being a loving mother, a good wife and a working professional and reminding me that with God and faith in our hearts that everything is possible. To my husband, Ethan Upshaw, I am who I am in my career because of your unwavering love and support, you have helped me grow up through the many years and always offered a lending ear when I needed another perspective. I am forever grateful for your daily encouragement and assurance. You're the best partner that I could wish for. Thank you for all the months and nights and meetings of being a single parent um, and for being able to handle our kiddos when I took countless hours off of our family to be able to work and get the job done. You held back on many career opportunities and dreams of your own to allow me to shine. You are deserving of this achievement as I am. To the best accomplishment that I will ever have in my life, 
Josh, you want to put that down? <laughs> Joshua and Jacob, I am thankful for being your, my daily inspiration in the world of education to make it a better place, not only for the two of you, but all our kiddos and teachers and families in CISD. Thank you for loving me and giving me the greatest privilege in life of being your mom. In closing, I'd, share, I'd like to share with you the Spanish quote written by Paolo Ferri. La educación no cambia el mundo, cambia las personas que un día van a cambiar el mundo. Which means education does not change the world, it changes the people who will one day change this world. The success of our school district is the success of the students that we get to teach every day. Thank you, school board, Dr. Noll, for having the faith in me to assist our district in the next steps to our continued success. Have a good night. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dr. Upshaw. Yeah, congr congratulations. Congr congratulations, Dr. Upshaw. I, I, uh, I have to take just a moment to say that uh, we're really excited and proud for you. I know this school district has been watching you from afar. You've been such a quiet leader and an inspiration to so many. And, and this uh, during this COVID, everybody working from home and going to school uh, at home, uh, the success that we have as a district heavily falls upon your shoulders of making it happen and getting it done. And so we're just very, very excited and know that, uh, that our district is in great hands because you've accepted this position and you're gonna do a great job. Congratulations and we really appreciate you. Thank you very much. Outstanding. I'll tell you what, that was so inspirational. I gotta go buy my wife flowers or something. <laughs> <laughs> great job. Okay. Now recorded. Very, very, very nice, outstanding. All right, gents, uh, we're back up to item three of the agenda, that's administration. Item 3A, consider adoption of second emergency resolution for uh, relating to COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Noll. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Gladys, if you'll please present. Thank you, Dr. Noll. Board members, if you recall at your March board meeting, you passed an emergency resolution relating to the COVID-19 pandemic. The resolution was prompted by Governor Abbott's March 13th disaster proclamation and gave Dr. Noll the authority to implement the pay during closing provision of board policy DEA. It also gave him the ability to alter the school calendar if needed, address leaves and absences related to the COVID-19, seek waivers from TEA related to the health emergency and make necessary emergency purchases. Since then, both the state and national government have issued further orders and pass laws related to the pandemic, while governmental agencies continue to provide updated guidance. Based on this ever-changing legal landscape, the district is requesting that you approve a second emergency resolution. The second emergency resolution suspends timelines for when the district must respond to complaints filed pursuant to board policies DGBA, FNG, and GF. The resolution does not affect timelines for initial filings or appeals. While the district continues to make every effort to respond to all complaints in a timely manner, the nature of the complaint affects its ability to do this consistently. The resolution establishes that a day for the purposes of job postings is any day on which virtual instruction is offered. And the resolution makes clear that the district's offices are currently closed. Whether our offices remain closed entirely or if they will reopen on a limited basis will in large part depend on forthcoming guidance from the state. Finally, the resolution allows Dr. Null to waive policies or parts of policies after consulting with President Williams if he determines such an action is necessary to operate the district as the health um, emergency evolves. The resolution also requires Dr. Null to periodically report to you, the board, any actions he has taken under either of the board's emergency resolutions. With this explanation, we ask the board to approve the second emergency re resolution um, related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, gentlemen. So moved. We have a motion, Mr. Huggins. A second the motion. We had a second, I believe, Mr. Huber. Gentlemen, let's go with discussion. Any discussion to be had? Hear not. All in favor? Motion by Sam. Signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Any uh, opposition? Hear not. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I'll send item three B. Request authorization to submit an educator appraisal waiver application to the Texas Education Agency. Dr. No. Yes, sir. Dr. Hines, thank you. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, Dr. No. 
Tonight, we respectfully request that the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees authorize the, the district to submit an educator appraisal waiver application to the Texas Education Agency. The Commission of Education has the authority to grant waivers to school districts that are unable to meet the requirements of the Texas Education Code for teacher appraisal, principal appraisal, and campus administrator appraisal due to the circumstances arising from the COVID-19 pandemic and our resulting, our resulting extended closure. While many appraisals have been completed, there are many appraisals that have not. If you approve our application for a waiver and the commissioner grants the district's waiver for the school year, the district can waive all or a portion of appraisal requirements resulting from disruptions related to the pandemic. As required, prior to bringing this item for your consideration, the district level planning and decision-making committee approved this application last week. We seek your approval to apply for this waiver. Thank you. So moved. We have a motion, Mr. Moore. Second. Second, Second Mr. Moore, Mr. Sanders, I'm sorry. Uh, gentlemen, uh, any discussion? Here in yes, I, I, have, I have a question. Mr. Moore, you're up. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Dr. Hines, um, I, I completely agree that, you know, during these kind of unprecedented times, and I understand why we're seeking the, the waiver for, for the uh, evaluations. Um, are we doing anything, though? I, I understand the waiver is... is with what's required and mandated by the state, but are we doing anything internally to even some form of informal evaluation at the campus level as to what the teachers, how they're performing? And um, my, my fear is if we don't do anything that there's gonna be some uh, some tremendous, uh, tremendously creative education that goes on that I, I don't want those things to be overlooked that would have ordinarily been picked up on, on a classroom style evaluation. Yes, sir, uh, and it's kind of, a you know, it's really a, a wide range of where we are. You know, in some cases, uh, observations have been done and, and the appraisals have been completed and we can close those out for this year. Um, and other, in other cases, we might have a lot of data and done several walkthroughs, but may not, may not have done the formal observation, so we may not score it. And in all cases, we will have a opportunity and a place for uh, some feedback this year that will be uh, part of the process. It just, uh, you know, there'll be several teachers that just won't be scored as a result because we just don't have all the information to, to complete the appraisal process. But there will be um, some in feedback given throughout this process. Thank you. Can um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, uh, Dr. Hines. All right, we're on item, we're on item four now, that's planning and construction. 4A, consider and approve the selection of construction manager at risk for the new elementary in Conroe High School feeder zone flex 21. Dr. Noel. Yes, sir, thank you. We're really gonna have easy, Foster is now gonna join our meeting and he will be presenting um, the next few items. He's got quite a few here this evening, uh, Mr. Foster. I do. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Nall. It's my pleasure to bring forward this item, which is an approval of a selection of a construction manager at risk for our next elementary school in the Conroe High School feeder zone, which we refer to as Flex 21. Uh, we did have seven firms respond to our request for qualifications uh, to participate in our step one of our two-step uh, selection process. The state limits us to uh, no more than five invitees to, to participate in the second step. Our committee reviewed the respondents and made a short list of four firms to participate in the second step. So following our evaluations, uh, our committee recommends that Duratech Incorporated be selected as the offeror that presents the best value to the district. And, and as always, our ranking evaluation is attached to this board item as well. At your time, at this time, we're requesting your approval of this selection of Duratec as our CM at risk. Hey, gentlemen, can I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Moore. Second. Second, Dale Lindman. We have a motion second. Any discussion? I have a question, Mr. President. Go ahead, Mr. Sanders. Mr. Foster, I just want to make sure this Flex 21, is it a K through four or is it going to be K through six? Uh, I think uh, Dr. Hines probably has better information on that, but I believe it will be a K through six, if I'm not mistaken. But the, that's what the, I thought. Right, sure. 
but our, our flex school plan can go in either configuration from pre K to four, five, six, K to six. Yes, so right. It, it can be flexible. It would be a K six. Um, you know, really, we've when we've studied it. Our projections are the growth with Stewart, um, which is for us to really make this work. We'll need a K six. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Location. It is uh, on McCaleb Road, so it's roughly or almost exactly two miles south of Highway 105 on McCaleb Road. Um, so it's rough, about a mile or so north of 2854. So it's kind of in that middle middle section between 2854 and, and Highway 105. All right, sounds good. We had a motion and a second, gentlemen. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, any opposition? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Uh, while you're on, Mr. Foster, let's go ahead into item B, consider and approve selection of service providers and perform as best as abatement services and mold remediation services and authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute contracts for those services. Doctor, I'm sorry, Mr. Foster. Well, to, uh, to kind of clarify what that mouthful is, is uh, we are trying to and attempting to get gain your approval to create a a pool of licensed and qualified vendors to be able to respond to our need for abatement work. Uh, for example, uh, the next item on our list is Campus Renovations 2020. Uh, we require some abatement work to be done at that campus from the original uh, construction uh, that precedes the work that we're going to do with our contractor. We'll, we'll ask for approval for next. So, but what this is, this is a pool of vendors. So it's not a guarantee of work for any one of them, uh, but it's a pre-qualification where each of the firms that's awarded tonight will be invited to provide competitive and customized quotes for individual projects as they arise. So at tonight, we request your approval of this selection of a pool of abatement contractor mold remediation vendors. Young yeah, I entertain a motion. So moved. Yes, I got a motion by Mr. Husband. Seems like a second by Mr. Sanders. Uh, any discussion? Hearing no, di any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion passes unanimously. Con thank you, Mr. Foster. We'll go on and uh, continue on to item C. Consider an approved guaranteed maximum price amendment for the campus renovation 2020 project and authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute the contract document. Mr. Foster. Uh, and as I previously mentioned, uh, this uh, this item is to approve uh, an annual style project. So it's a, what we used to call life cycle. It's a uh, campus renovation for 2020. It's where we replace building systems that have reached the end of their useful life and need to be uh, replaced. So if you recall in February, we selected GTT Inc. as our, our construction manager at risk for this project. And they've been working with the DLR group, our architecture firm. Uh, to prepare a guaranteed maximum price proposal for this work of $6,041,605. So the, the primary locations for this work this summer are Glenlock Elementary, which is our air conditioning replacement. It's the major portion of this particular contract. Uh, Kaufman, uh, where we're adding to their driveways uh, to increase the car rider line to get more cars off of Northridge Forest. We're going to be repaving the back driveway that serves Wilkins, Wilkerson, uh, Knox Junior High and the, the Woodlands Transportation Center. And as well, we're going to do our annual, annual athletic uh, facilities improvements where we resurface tracks and tennis courts and gym floors and things of that nature. So at this time, we're requesting your approval of the guaranteed maximum price of $6,041,605. Okay, gentlemen, I have a motion. I'm sorry, can I entertain a motion? So moved. Okay, I have one for Mr. Moore, a second. Second. All right, second, Mr. Husband. Any discussion? Here, none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Here, none. Motion passes unanimously. Um, next item, item D, consider approval of the guaranteed maximum price amendment for the safety and security 2020 project. Dr. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Foster. So uh, this item for your approval is uh, one of our 2019 bond projects, which is a safety and security uh, project. And this is our 2020 installment for this uh, for this work. So in February, we selected Ellisor Constructors to be our CM at risk for this project. And we've teamed them up with PBK, our architect firm. And together, they've prepared a guaranteed maximum price for 2020 to be $4,249,991. So the work uh, that we're doing 
this uh, this year as generally speaking, so I don't want to get too specific, but we're doing uh, distributed antenna systems, which uh, enhance our first responder uh, radio signals within our buildings, fire alarm upgrades, security system upgrades, access control upgrades, uh, which is hard uh, hardware and card readers, uh, secure camera upgrades, improvements to our secure vestibules and security lighting, fencing, things of that nature. So primary locations this uh, for this contract are McCullough Junior High, Moorhead Junior High, uh, Milam Elementary, Grangerland Intermediate, San Jacinto, uh, and our Police Command Center on the uh, Loop 336. So at this time, we're requesting your approval of the guaranteed maximum price of $4,249,991. Ms. Dunning. I move. I make the motion. Uh, Mr. Hubert, motion. Second, Mr. Husbands. Any discussion? Here not. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposition? Aye. All right, here and no opposition. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, thank you, Mr. Foster. Once again, Mr. Foster, Mr. Foster, item E, consider approval of guaranteed maximum price amendment for Runyon Elementary School PE Classroom Edition. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Foster. All right, well, this approval is for the uh, guaranteed maximum price uh, for our PE Classroom Edition at Runyon Elementary that resulted from our 2019 bond. In January, we selected GTT Inc. as our construction manager at risk for this project, and we paired them with DLR Group. Together, they worked and uh, prepared a guaranteed maximum price proposal for this work of $5,177,974. At this time, we request your approval of the guaranteed maximum price for this project. Gentlemen? I'll move. move. Okay, we got Second. Motion by Mr. Sanders, I believe, and a second by, um, by uh, Mr. Husband. Okay. Motion, motion by Mr. Moore. Mr. Motion. Moore. Second, second by Mr. Husband. Thank you, sir. Uh, outstanding. Um, all right, any discussion? Yes, I have a question. Go ahead, Mr. Sanders, please. Mr. Foster, the uh, I, I didn't really look at the details of this. Are they, they're not dismissing the cafeteria that's there at Runyon. We're going to add on to the school and build a brand new gym. Is that correct? Yes, this is a, a full building addition for a dedicated gym that will serve for their PE and, and other uh, other physical activities. So that will relieve the cafeteria they've currently got from hosting anything other than uh, children eating lunch and breakfast. Okay. And, and can you tell me where exactly on the property the gym would be located? Uh, the gym, generally speaking, is uh, on the north side of the building. So, you know, there's a big flat soccer field over the north side. Yes. Uh, and the portable buildings on that site used to be located between the soccer field and the building. Uh, yes. Our maintenance department's worked really hard and got the portables out of, out of the way so we can put the gym in that, in that location, essentially. Okay. And so what will happen to those portables? Uh, they, they've been relocated on site currently because they, they still remain in use uh, until we get this project completed. Right. Do we anticipate the need for the portables in the future? Um, I think, again, Dr. Hines probably better suited to answer that question, but with the growth in the uh, neighborhoods around it, I would say probably so. Okay. I, yes. I mean, I, I anticipate we will at some point we'll, we'll need to do some rezoning um, when we open Flex 21, there's a good chance we can do some kind of shifting of east to west uh, in that area. And so there'll be an opportunity, but, uh, you know, we're continuing to get growth in that area. And so until we can do um, some rezoning, I, I do not anticipate that we'll be out of the portable business totally. Okay, thank you. I, I'm really excited that Runyon's finally going to have a gymnasium. And so they don't have to double up the cafeteria uh, and the gym is the same place. And so I'm really glad that that's happening. I just wanted to make sure there was going to be enough room on the, the site. I also know that there's a lot of slope to that land somewhat. If I'm, if I re recall that, I see Mr. Foster, you shaking your head. So I just, okay. it, the price seemed a little high, but it may be high because of the addition to it and tying it into the current building, as well as the fact of the, the slope of the property. Can you comment? Um, about 
if, if I can comment about the, the price actually came in very favorable. It was under our budget target that we had set for the project overall. Uh, and within the, within the work, I mean, we are building a gym, uh, but we are also able to free up what is, what is their current library in that, in that campus, turn that current library back into classrooms. classrooms. And then okay. we're adding, adding space with this that will be library as well. And not just not so, I mean, cause their current library is converted classroom. So yes. we're going to give them a, a more suitable library space with this project as well. Okay. Thank you. Outstanding. We have a motion and a second, gentlemen. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Here and now, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. Item F, consider approval guaranteed maximum price amendment for Washington Junior High conversion. Uh, Mr. Foster, please. All right. Well, our this approval is for work that will convert Washington Junior High into Washington High School once Stockton Junior High opens. So in December, we selected GTT as our same at risk for this project, and we paired them with the IBI group as the architect. And together, they worked to develop a GMP of $4,091,348 for the conversion. And at this time, we're requ requesting your approval of the guaranteed maximum price. I so move approval. A motion. Second. Second. Uh, who's second? Husband. All right, Mr. Husband, second. All right, any discussion? There no discussion. Gentlemen, would you signify by saying aye? All approve? Aye. 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 All right. Any opposition? Here or none, motion passes unanimously as well. Thank you. Item G, consider approval guaranteed maximum price amendment for York um, Junior High School Edition project. Mr. Foster. This item is for work uh, resulting from our 2019 bond referendum for the uh, increasing capacity at York Junior High School. In December, we selected Marshall Construction to be our construction manager at risk, and we've paired them with PBK Architects for this project. Together, they've developed a guaranteeing maximum price of $16,093,030 for this work. We're requesting your approval of the guaranteeing maximum price uh, for this project at this time. Hey, gentlemen, can I get a motion, please? No move. Motion, Mr. Husband, second? Second. Second, Mr. Moore. Uh, any, any discussion? Questions. I have a question. All right, Mr. Husbands, you're up. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Easy. Does this, uh, Mr. Foster, does this uh, uh, addition, uh, is it similar or exactly the same as the one that went on uh, at Irons? No, it is, uh, it is uh, very different from what went on at Irons. Irons was a very simple eight classroom addition uh, that was on a building that was designed to take it. Um, so this uh, was a much more complex addition that it actually, if you're standing in the backyard looking at the building, goes from one corner all the way to the other. Uh, so it increases the capacity of not only the science labs, the art labs, the classroom spaces, but also the fine arts departments, the athletics departments. Uh, so basically uh, every, every portion of the building along the, the back wall, which kind of faces to the northeast on that side, uh, is going to be touched. So it's a it's a uh, wildly different addition than what we did at Irons. Thank, thank you for clarifying. Just, I, I saw a tremendous price difference there. There had to be an explanation, and you, you eloquently did so. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Sanders? That was my exact same question. Mr. Husband hit the nail on the head. Outstanding. All right, gentlemen, we have a motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, uh, Mr. Foster. Capital updates. Receive capital updates, Mr. Foster. Item H. All right. Bear with me. I'm going to share my screen with you uh, for a second. And so if you would acknowledge that you can see my presentation when it comes up. Yes, sir. Looks good. I got you. See so at this time, I'd love to give you an update on our capital improvements we have that are underway uh, throughout the district. I'm going to start with uh one as soon as i hit the right button uh stockton junior high school so stockton is set to open in august of this this coming august uh, so we're happy to report the building is on time so we won't have any trouble turning it over for students in the uh, august time frame so you can see from the outside of our building here uh we started the work for the landscape and the irrigation so the trenching you're seeing around the front door is just that it's for the irrigation system that's going to keep the, the front door pretty and green throughout the year 
So on the inside of the building, you're starting to see a lot more finished materials going in. This is a look from the upstairs, looking down the main main street corridor. And on the inside of the classroom, you're starting to see things becoming more and more finished. Uh, so right now they're, they're wrapping up uh, the, basically the final so we can cover the ceiling. So you can see our ceiling tiles going in and then we're working with the city uh, even in their limited uh, processes with the COVID-19 response on their side, they're being very flexible, flexible with us getting our inspections done and things of that nature. So the building is uh, set to receive furniture in June uh, and everybody to move in. So it should be no trouble for the August opening. Moving on to Flex School number 20, which is our newest elementary school in the Caney Creek High School feeder. Uh, from an overhead uh, shot, uh, last month I showed you a completed building pad. So this month you're getting to see the foundation work being installed. So I know we're at a high level view, but you can see the, uh, the drilling equipment's out there putting in the drill foundation. And in the last week since we've taken this photograph, we started the underground utilities for the building, as well as the underground utilities for the site. So the plumbing, the sanitary sewer, the uh, domestic water, the storm water, all those, all those uh, entities are being installed uh, as we speak. So the building is on schedule and scheduled to open in August of 21. And that is our current update. And that's all I've got. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Foster, outstanding job. All right, do you want to bring it brings us to item five, business and finance, 5A, consider award for award of RFP uh, number 20-01-06, copiers and duplicator equipment rental. Mr. Yes, I, no. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Rick Reeves has now joined us in the meeting. Mr. Reeves, go ahead. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Null. Uh, I have the next three items I'll be presenting to you this evening and just wanted you to know that all three have been uh, released through the district's online e-bidding system to our registered vendors and as required by law, also advertised in the Conroe Courier, all three uh, best value as recommended for award. Uh, tonight we recommend that the Board of Trustees award RFP number 20-01-06 copier and duplicator equipment rental to Xerox Business Solutions Southwest, uh, also known as Day Hill Office Technology Corporation, for an annual estimated annual expenditure of $850,000. In this request for proposals, vendors were asked to offer pricing for the rental of copiers and digital duplicators and include all costs to complete services required. Pricing for this project shall be effective for three years with an option to renew annually for two additional one-year terms through June 30th, 2025. Proposals were evaluated by the purchasing department. Funds are provided in the general fund. And based on our previous bid contract, the district is anticipating savings of approximately $28,000 per year. At this time, I recommend your approval. I, yep. move so, I got a motion from um, Trustee Sanders. Did I get a second from someone? Second from Mr. Moore. Second from Mr. Moore. Thank you, gentlemen. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none. Thank you. Uh, motion passed unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. I will we'll go on to uh, item B. Consider war RFP um, number 20-01-07, water and waste water plant operation services. Mr. Reeves, go ahead, sir. Once again, we're recommending that the board award RFP 20-01-07, water and wastewater plant operation services to Texas Operations and Professional Services, also known as Tejas Environmental Enterprises, LLC, for an annual estimated annual expenditure of $150,000. In this request for proposals, vendors were asked to offer pricing to service three water facilities, three wastewater facilities, and three lift stations and include all costs of complete services required. Pricing for this project should be effective for two years with an option to renew annually for an additional three one-year terms through April 30th, 2025. Proposals were evaluated by the CISD maintenance department and reviewed by the purchasing department. Funds are provided in the general fund. At this time, I recommend your approval. John, can I, can mm -hmm. I move? have a motion, Mr. Uh, Husband? Second. Second, Mr. Hubert. Thank you, gentlemen. Here, any, any discussion? Here, no discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Here, none. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Outstanding job. Um, next item, consider RFQ number 20-01-10, critical need in Stockton Junior High musical instrument, equipment, and supplies. Mr. Reeves. 
Yes, sir. Again, we are recommending that the board award RFQ number 20-01-10, Critical Needs in Stockton Junior High School Musical Instruments and Supplies to the Attached Vendors for an annual estimated expenditure of $1,060,000. Uh, request for quotes pertaining to the purchase of new musical instruments, equipment, and supplies for the opening of Stockton Junior High and our annual critical needs purchases were emailed to our awarded vendors that was part of our musical instruments supplies bid that was awarded in February of 2018. Unit pricing was requested for new instruments and supplies through September 30th of 2020. Proposals were evaluated by the CISD Fine Arts Department and reviewed by the Purchasing Department. Funds for this purchase are provided in the General Fund and the Capital Projects Fund. At this time, I recommend your approval. General, I have a, a motion. So moved. A motion. More and second, Mr. Sanders. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none. Thank you, gentlemen. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Appreciate all your hard work there. Great job. Appreciate it. Um, next item, business and finance. Consider uh, business finance D. Consider approval of 2020 through 2021 employee group health program. Dr. No. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, at this time, we have Darren Rice that is joining our meeting as well as Mr. Terry Brown. Uh, Mr. Rice, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, I think y'all uh, can see that I'm sharing my screen for y'all. Um, good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Null. Tonight, we're recommending that the Board of Trustees approve the employee medical coverage rates and plan design for the self-funded health insurance program for the 2020-2021 plan year. The district self-funded group health insurance program is designed to provide the district employees a quality health plan at a reasonable cost. However, due to the continued rise of medical inflation, uh, hovering right around 8%, the plan must be modified to remain sound. Medical plan designs are recommended for change along with premium increases for the 2020-2021 plan year. Those changes are shown on your screen by plan and highlighted in red. The, the district's prescription drug plan has outperformed ex expectations this current year saving the health plan an estimated $1.5 million. With these results, we are recommending no changes to the current prescription drug plan. CSD believes all of its plans will continue to be offered at competitive rates, particularly the United Charter Plan, which utilizes the Kelsey Seabold networks. Kelsey Seabold has opened uh, a new practice in Conroe, in the Conroe area, and is planning to build a full-fledged clinic in the near future. If the plan changes are approved, the total projected health plan cost will be $52 million, which is a 5.75% increase over the previous year. Uh, the district will be funding 57% of, of the health plan costs and employee premiums funding the remaining 43%. Mr. Terry Brown, the district's health insurance consultant is here this evening to answer any questions you may have. The plan design changes come with, uh, come with a unanimous recommendation from the Employee Benefits Committee. At this time, I recommend your approval. Okay, gentlemen, may I have a motion? Motion. All right, we had a motion, Mr. Um, was that Mr. Sanders or Mr. Uh, Husband? Husband. All right, motion, Mr. Husband, second? Second, I'll second the motion to Skeeter. Uh, second, Mr. Mr. Hubert. All right, gentlemen, now a discussion. I have questions. Uh, regarding the uh, co-pays, are co-pays changing in any way? Uh, yes, sir. If you could look on your screen and we, we can start. Uh, uh, the pink columns are the United uh, Kelsey plan. If you, mm -hmm. if you follow down, you can see the office visit co-pay is about the fourth line down in our plan benefit design. Uh, they're increasing from 30 to $35. Our specialist copay is increasing from $45 to $50 in that plan. And then you can follow that. The next plan is our United Nexus plan. Uh, uh, those copays, basically all our copays are increasing by $5 a piece. Okay. If you follow those. That's what I thought. I just wanted to confirm that. Yes, sir. And, and, and one of the things, the, the, the total increase uh, of the plan was right at four and a half million dollars. The plan adjustments that we've made in the plan design itself uh, generate about 1.5 million dollars worth of savings. 
and uh, the rev the premium increases is generating the other three million dollars of the needed funding. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Any other any other questions? Here and not. Quick question, Mr. Williams. Um, I also noticed it looks like the uh, out of pocket max has gone up uh, from five thousand to sixty two fifty. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And do we have any projection as to what what we think that'll do for um, for claims, for you know, are, are we what, what drove that number to go up twelve fifty a year? Uh, yeah, really, we looked at the at the plan changes uh, as a whole. Mr. Brown might have the actual decrement for that particular change, but all the plan changes, including any of our annual deductible changes that we made, our copays, and our out of pocket maximums, generate <coughs> about one point five million dollars worth of savings. Okay, and uh, on the, did we make any changes to stop loss deductible at all? No. Okay, so all that is the same. Yes, sir. Right. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, we have a motion second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any, any opposition? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Outstanding job. Thank you. And I know there was a wealth of folks that contributed to this, and you guys always do a phenomenal job at evaluating and providing this outstanding plan for our for our employees. Outstanding job once again. Uh, item five E: Receive financial reports. Dr. All right, Karen Garza will be joining us now in the meeting and we'll have her make the presentation. Thank you, Karen. All right, good evening, President Williams, members of the board and Dr. Null. It is my pleasure this evening to present the financial statements for the month ended March 31st. The first statement we'll look at this evening is the balance sheet. The balance sheet shows the district's assets, liabilities and fund balance. For the general fund, the debt service fund, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Taking a look at our largest asset on the balance sheet, our cash and investments, we'll concentrate on the general fund. In our state pools, we have $200 million. In our short-term investments, we have $44.6 million. Our investments with Wood Forest National Bank, $76.2 million. And our longer-term investments with TCG Investment Advisors, $51.9 million for a total cash and investments in the general fund of $373.4 million. The next statement is the income statement. The income statement shows the district's revenues and expenditures. Our revenues come from three major sources, local, state, and federal. Our expenditures are presented by major object on this statement. In the general fund, of course, payroll is our largest expenditure at $221.7 million. In debt service, our debt service payment at 74.8 million. In child nutrition, supplies, and in self-funded insurance claims processing. Taking a closer look at our local revenue, of course, property taxes in the general fund and debt service fund are the largest generators of revenue. In child nutrition, that would be food sales and in self-funded insurance, premium contributions. Taking a look at our fund balance projection for the general fund. In the general fund, we are projecting a fund balance at 831 of $152 million. This is an increase of roughly 11.9 million. This is down slightly from last month's projection. The majority of that de decrease is due to a loss of investment income as a result of the decline in rates. We will also see a slight decline in state funding due to transportation funding that was lost. As Mr. Rice explained in the April workshop, our transportation funding is based on miles driven. So we will incur a loss of around $2 million in revenue from the state regarding that. However, there will be some expenditures um, on the expenditure side to offset that loss in revenue. In the child nutrition fund, we are projecting a fund balance decrease of $1.6 million. And the majority of this decrease is due to the loss of food sale revenue in our cafeterias during the closure. Um, as of today, we have distributed a total of 413,000 meals through our meal distributions. 
on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We are averaging about 50,000 meals on Thursdays and 34,000 on Tuesdays. Our March claim has been filed um, for, for reimbursement in the amount of $450,000. We are anticipating our April claim will be um, around a million dollars. We are trending to distribute um, almost 350,000 meals in the month of April. Our self-funded insurance, total revenue for the month of $4 million, total expense of $4,180,000 million, 4 for a loss of $91,000. Our total net loss for the year is at $460,000. Participation at the Wellness Center was down in March, partly due to the closure during spring break, and then also limitation on types of visits due to COVID-19. Our investments as of March 31st, par value $627 million. Our pools are yielding 1.58. Our investments with Wood Forest National Bank, 1.71. Our short-term investments have a WAM of 181 days, yielding 1.62. Our longer-term investments with TCG have a WAM of 459, yielding 1.95. And our combined portfolio is yielding 1.63 with a WAM of 49 days. And our benchmark, the 90-day T-bill, is at 0.068%. Thank you, Ms. Garza. You're welcome. Gentlemen, any questions? Uh, yes, Mr. Williams, I do have a couple of questions for Go ahead, Mr. Moore. Uh, I know that we have uh, talked extensively during our workshop uh, we're still going to be getting our funding from the state, but I'm curious, is there going to be a delay in any of that funding coming in or will it, are we anticipating it'll be on the same schedule as if school was open? No, sir. We are, we are anticipating that funding should flow just as it has in years past. We will not experience any loss in funding due to ADA as the state is using historical ADA data to determine our ADA for the last nine weeks and they will be applying that calculation. So we should be right on track at our 94% um, as we have been in past years. And they're not delaying those payments at all? No, sir. Okay. And I know that it's not a major source of any of our funding, but the federal funding, um, is, is there any problem with that or is all that funnel through the state anyway? Um, we have not any, heard any concerns about federal funding um, to, as, of, as of this date. Thank you. Isn't it kind of interesting to note that the uh, the benchmark of the T-bill was close to two, not three or four months ago, I believe. Maybe not quite two, but 1.9 or something. Yes. Yeah. Good time. And pools are coming down as well. I looked this morning, they're at one 132. So um, they usually lag about 90 days behind um, what the overnight rates are doing. And, and I think this is this is Darren, and I and I think if y'all remember in the uh, budget presentation, we did decrease our our investment income for the general fund about 1.75 million uh, for for budget for next year. That's sure. Okay, gentlemen. Um, thank you, Ms. Garza. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Outstanding job as always, uh, keeping us financially sound, the responsible. Um, let's continue on. We don't. We are. We have no executive session, so we're going to skip right on to legal item nine. Um, Dr. Noll, Ms. Gladys. Yes, we'll have Ms. Gladys present. Thank you, Dr. Noll, President Williams. This is the, um, if you recall, in March, the board accepted um, the superintendent's recommendation to non renew Ms. Peduano's term contract at the end of the school year for performance issues. Um, she was sent notice as required by Texas law. She did not request a hearing within a time frame prescribed in law. And as a result, the district is coming back to you and asking that you um, non-renew her term employment contract, making her last day the last day of this school year and um, instruct us to uh, issue notice of that action to her. Mr. President, I move that the board non-renew the term employment contract of Linda Padawano at the end of its present term and direct the superintendent to provide Ms. Padawano notice of the board's action. A second. And a second, Mr. Husband. Any discussion, gentlemen? Hearing none, all in favor, would you signify by saying aye? Aye. 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 Passes. aye. Uh, gentlemen, with that being said, I have nothing else on the agenda. If I have no exceptions or any objections, Dr. Null, 
Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I just want to say thank you to uh, Ms. Blakelock. She was behind the scenes tonight coordinating the movement in and out of this meeting. So thank you um, to our communications team and, and Sarah specifically. Outstanding job, Ms. Blakelock and all the team. I appreciate everything you guys have done to make this move, this meeting as smooth and as successful as it has been. So thank you. Uh, gentlemen, any qu questions, discussion before we end our meeting? Move to adjourn. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Adjourn. Time is 7.17 p.m. Have a good evening, gentlemen. Thank you, man. Good night, everybody. Thanks, guys.